Hi, it's Nash from Alpha Phi. Please smash that like button, hit the subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. Today, we're gonna talk about a 75-year-old male's whole life policy. This is a special design for older uh, folks who might want to still take out a policy. Now, the traditional designs we talk about become quite challenging, but what you can do is a single premium whole life. This, for example, in this example, we're gonna do 500,000 one-time payment, which becomes a MEC or a modified endowment contract. Now, what you would you would say, you can always talk about trying to prevent MECs. Why would we want to do this? Well, in this specific situation, it may make sense. So let's dive in and talk about it. So older folks may want to be putting in money in into their you know family planning estate, whatever, to enable for planning for the next generation. A safe, liquid, tax-free area to position money. We always talk about tax-free. Now the modified endowment contract would actually create any gains on the cash value above cost basis, so meaning above the 500,000 put in, any gains that we'll look at in just a moment would be taxable if accessed and, and taken outside the policy. But if it, if it is allowed to sit and grow and uh, this person were to die, then the death benefit is still paid income tax-free to their beneficiaries. So it can kind of be a really good situation. Uh, what we did here was make this policy a 50x the base premium. So that means $10,000 going to base premium, $500,000 total into the policy. We didn't add any other uh, riders to raise up the death benefit to prevent the mech. We just let the mech occur. What that does is reduce any expenses and fees, which would be very high of a person this age, right? But we don't necessarily care that it's becoming a mech so we can reduce those fees and the results are quite interesting. Uh, you can also do a reduce paid up in year four where normally we do it the earliest year eight otherwise because that would cause a mech but since we've already mech'd it it doesn't matter. So with this company uh, you can do it in year four that cuts the base premium reduces the expenses and fees even further. So why would a mech become a good thing? Efficiency number one, overfunding into PUAs without any extra expenses. So we're cutting even more than a normal policy would have that we're trying to prevent a MEC from occurring. We're allowing the MEC, reducing those expenses and fees, and the performance is quite good for a person of you know such a high age. Protection and legacy, death benefit becomes a priority. And even if the cash value is growing and you want to access it, and you do have to pay income tax on the gains, you still, uh, at this age, may not have as high of an income or income tax bracket, so it may not matter. Death benefit is still paid income tax-free, so even though it's becoming a mech and there would be tax upon accessing the cash value from the owner, once they die, the, the death benefit is paid income tax-free as long as your, your uh, estate is under the estate tax threshold, which for a married couple is in the 20 million plus range, so very high and cash value performance is gonna perform quite well, especially given somebody uh, of this age. So let's look at an example here. Okay, before diving into the Excel numbers, which you all know I love to do, let's look at the uh, policy example. So this is with a Guardian L95, a really good hybrid product I talk about a lot. Different products will have different age uh, maximums. This one happens to be age 80. So we're at age 75, still a few years actually to take out this policy. We have a $10,000 base premium, buying $87,000 of whole life, and then we have 470,000 going into PUAs. We don't have any term rider attached and the policy becomes a modified endowment contract in policy year one. The death benefit with 500,000 total out of pocket uh, is 733,871 in year one. Now, we're showing zero out of pocket thereafter. So just one time, one single premium policy, zero thereafter. You'll notice in years two and three, the base premium is still due. So the dividends are paying for this base premium or the policy is covering that for itself. So you'll notice there's a slight drop in the death benefit for a few years. Then it has a bigger drop in year four. The reason that is, is that in year four, we're 
we're doing the reduced paid up at the beginning of year four and cutting off the base premium so that amortized amount of premiums due until age 94 or 95 I should say uh, is is gone and the death benefit is amortized for how much you put into the policy but respectively it's not that big of a drop for just one premium and the amount of premiums that we're not paying into the policy and then it catches back up here see how it, it surpasses the original amount out here at uh, year 9 and 10 age 83 84 respectively and at all times this value is higher than we've put in 500,000 it does drop a little bit you could certainly keep this propped up if you continue to pay those base premiums but I wanted to illustrate a really interesting one-time single premium policy now you also notice the cash value is quite decent as well for a person of this age so 474, 336 divided by 500,000 is 94, 95% coming back to cash value. Now, it breaks even out here in your three. 500 out of pocket, 502, 590 in cash value. Now this may not be the reason why we're doing this, but it's always nice to have the access and option to the liquidity, uh, even though it is a mech and the access to this money would be uh, uh, subject to income tax, you know, there's different different ways and, and reasons we would want to do this. So let's look at the numbers in Excel to do a little deeper dive. So 500,000 sing, 500, single premium MEC paid right out of the policy, 1090 split, or sorry, not 1090, uh, 50x the base premium, which would be a essentially be 2% going to base premium and 98% going to PUA is 50x the base premium. So we have 500,000 out of pocket for one year, nothing thereafter. We have the guarantees and the dividend scale. So we were just talking about the dividend scale in, in, the, other in the PDF. But you'll notice the death benefit here on the guarantee side, once we reduce paid up it, that death benefit becomes fixed at 634,559. So uh, definitely guaranteed to be higher than you put into the policy, almost 30%. The cash value comes and breaks even here in year six, quite tremendous. The reason again is that we don't have to pay for all these uh, expenses to raise up the death benefit to allow for us to fund without a mech because we've intentionally triggered a mech. So uh, if we look at the, the uh, percent coming back to cash value in year one, 95%, right? 500,000 out, 474 uh, in cash value. Death benefit has broken even already on the uh, dividend scale in year one. Death benefit has also broken even on the guaranteed scale in year one, right? Guarantees to uh, pay more than you put out of pocket. On the cash value side, breaking even in year six, uh, and on the dividend scale, year three. You'll notice the, um, I have the changes year over year in cash value here, as well as the dividend scale death benefit. So you see the biggest hits are year two, where where it's actually decreasing a little bit, that's because the the dividends again are paying for the base premium because we're not putting it out of pocket. Then actually by year three, it overcomes those expenses and there is a little bit added to the death benefit that's left over. And year four, biggest hit because we're doing that reduced paid up. Again, because it's already a mech, we can do it in year four is the earliest with this product. Normal uh, policies when we don't wanna trigger a mech, the earliest is year eight. And then you can see the death benefit growing here by uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16,000, 18,000 a year. Uh, so out here, you know, age uh, 85 to age 95, we've got, you know, 700 to 900,000 in death benefit. So really interesting option to be aware of. It, I do get a lot of inquiries from older folks wanting to do some legacy planning you know, late age 60s, 70s, and so I thought this was a good option to explore and become aware of, uh, balancing the trade-offs between triggering that modified endowment contract and still generating quite uh, interesting cash value and death benefit performance for legacy planning, protection, and that sort of thing that's also paid income tax-free. So I hope this was helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions, drop a comment, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. 
Also, you can learn more at alphacrusaders.com at the link at the end of this video.